Welcome back to Learning Layer. On this segment, we're going to continue our conversation with Joe Kerrigan as he gets ready for his CISSP exam. So, Joe, uh, welcome back. Uh, welcome to Domain 5. Domain 5. <laughs> well, um, what, what did you think? Like we said last time, it's it's different vibes than the more technical 3 and 4. It is. It's the, uh, the authentication chapter, yeah. if you will. Yeah. The authentication, authorization, the AAA, and the, right. identif- and the identity. It's all about identity management. Yep. Yep. So I thought it would be a good idea to sort of talk about Domain 5 by just going super deep and doing a question together. So, okay, why don't you start? And okay. we're, we're on a podcast here, so we got to read the question to, to the audience. But All right. We'll make sure it's uh, on the YouTube page as well. But so why don't you do two things? Read me the question, and okay. then maybe like telling tell me like in real time what's going through your head as you're approaching this question. Okay. So the question starts off with, you are configuring a biometric hand scanner to secure your data center, mm-hmm. right? So immediately the first thing goes through my head is uh, my, my objection to biometrics uh, <laughs> from a security standpoint, and that is that they are immutable. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Right, but right. I have lost this debate. And it's over, so I must accept it and move on. Wow, that's very mature. Everybody is uh, everybody is all in on biometrics. They mm-hmm. are pretty good, um, but I don't think they're the panacea that they plan to be. Mm-hmm. But they're good. They are okay. good. Which of the following practices is best to follow? So which of the following practices is best to follow? That's immediately that. Now I'm looking for, there are, there are a bunch of different things you can do with a, with a hand scanner mm-hmm. uh, when you're administering it. Uh, so now they're asking what is the best one to follow. There's a key detail buried in the first sentence that I think is going to be important for this question. And even if we're wrong and that detail's not important, that's fine. We are like actively engaging with the question. Okay. So can I guess what it is? Please. I was, uh, yes. Is go. it that you are actually configuring the hand scanner? Is that the detail? So you're adjusting yeah, no, the settings on the hand scan. So so that's half of it. Okay. <laughs> in that you're right, you have some sort of control because like you said, everybody thinks biometric is just the the end all be all, but it's still prone to human configuration, Correct. right? So that's this this the the first half. But where what's the setting? Where are we configuring this? Uh for a data center. And what do we? Well, okay, okay. Sorry, let me ask the obvious question. And why does that matter? Well, that matters, and that's. I shouldn't. I shouldn't just say data center, right? Well, your your question is absolutely one hundred percent important because if I'm just accessing uh, or doing this for access to the building in general, and there are secondary security uh, things in place, I may not have the same level of scrutiny on the biometric for the front door that I do for the data center. Mm -hmm. The data center is going to be much more important to me. It is a higher valued asset than somebody coming in the front door because that's where everything lives, right? All the, one of my most important assets, my data live there. That's why, I mean, they call the data center, it's really like a server farm, right? A little mini server farm. But I think calling it a data center is a good idea because your data is physically there. Yep. And the the other thing that you sort of mentioned, uh, uh, that that you started to hint at, but to make it explicit, is you're probably going to have fewer individuals who should be attempting to access your data center than those who, in your example, are just coming to the building. Right. So why don't you read A? So A is decrease the reader's sensitivity. Reject this one right away. Right. Because Why? because if you decrease the sensitivity, you increase the uh, opportunity for a, uh, a type two error, the false, no, yes, the false authentication error. You're effectively right. increasing what is called the FAR, mm-hmm. which is the false access rate. False acceptance, acceptance rate. Acceptance rate. But yeah, but, but you, you're thinking about it the right way, right? Because somebody who 
should not be accepted was accepted. So that's the F A R. So right. what's the type one? What's the F R R? That is a uh, false rejection. Okay, so if you're falsely false rejection rejected, rate. meaning what? Meaning that you should have been granted access, but were not. What's the difference? What are the consequences of a type one versus type two error? So a type one error is somebody is, you've rejected something you shouldn't have, which means somebody can't do their job. Okay. Uh, that's, that's the worst case scenario. Right. Now, depending on the state of urgency, maybe that's really, really bad. Uh, so you have other other things in place, but it, generally speaking, like if I if I'm just going into a server room to uh, check on the status of a server, I touch the palm scanner, I get a uh, rejection. I go, that's funny. I try again, I get a rejection. Maybe I wipe my hands off, clean it up, <laughs> uh, and then I get allowed in. Okay, no big deal. I've lost however long it takes me to do it twice. Yep. Um, the false acceptance rate has, or false acceptance has, or authorization or whichever, has a much higher consequence in that uh, a potential malicious actor, somebody who should not be in the area that you're protecting with this device, is, uh, is in there. Mm -hmm. That's very, very bad. Type 1 error rate is an inconvenience. Yes. Maybe a headache. Yep. Type 2, <laughs> you got Could a data Could be disastrous. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. So it sounds like, if I can say this back to you, what our goal in this situation should be is basically try to reduce the FAR or configure the sensitivity in such a way where we reduce the FAR. Correct. So, Joe, I'm looking at the question. What's the problem? That's not an answer choice. The perfect answer that right. we just did all this work predicting and figuring out is not one of the choices. No, in fact, the very next choice is increase the FAR, which is the same thing as decreasing the reader sensitivity. Right. So... I reject that one out of hand as well. Good. So now I'm down to two. Okay. All right. So the next one is decrease the FRR, which is the false rejection rate. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to not inconvenience my administrators as much. Mm -hmm. They're going to have easier access. But every time you decrease the FRR, you are potentially increasing the FAR. Mm, yep. Generally speaking, decrease the FRR is essentially the same as increasing the FAR. I love what you just said. Right. What do you notice about A, B, and C? They are all the same. They're all the same. Right. <laughs> there are three ways of saying the same thing. And by the way, if one of them is wrong, so are the other two. Right. So that leaves us with D, which, which is, is the right answer, which is? Increase the reader sensitivity. A.K.A. decrease the FAR. Correct. A.K.A. decrease the type 2 <laughs> errors. Right. <laughs> So that's, that's the answer. And that is how you do a question. Okay. That is that's how. And look, if you're following along at home, you're probably like, well, that took a long time. It took like right. six minutes. But obviously, we were talking out loud. We were thinking out loud. And the point that I want to emphasize is you can actually, you got to slow down the speed up. Doing that pre-work before you get the answer choices is actually going to speed you up on test day. Excellent. Well, I'm looking forward to that. So it should be soon, very soon, Sam. Very soon. So, Joe, good work. Keep up the good work, and we will see you next time for Domain 6. All right. <laughs>